All right, we keep talking about this random sample and random assigned. So I want to formalize this part of statistical inference. So we've talked a lot in the last chapter about a random sample. And the benefit of a random sample is it allows us to generalize our results to our population. So if we have a random sample, that's all we need to check to say, yes, I can apply my results to the population. Or if I don't have a random sample, then no, I can't apply these results to the population without a lot of extra work um, on that. And that's an area where you would hire a statistician to work with you on that. So that's what random samples get us. A random assignment to treatment groups. So taking your sample and just counting them off randomly and assigning them to the various treatments is what's going to give you cause and effect. So if you randomly assign your subjects to treatment groups, yes, you have cause and effect. If you don't randomly assign people to treatment groups, then you cannot get cause and effect. So what that means is if you aren't doing an experiment with treatments, you're not going to be able to get cause and effect at least not without a lot of very sophisticated work that you would be hiring a statistician to help you with. So the best place to be is this first box in the left corner, top left corner. That's a random sample and random assignment to treatment groups. That means you're going to get cause and effect and you can apply those results to your population. Um, if we move to the top right box, so we have a random sample, but no random assignment to treatment groups. So this would be things like observational studies and surveys, right? So things that you're not treating anybody, um, but you are you're pulling a random sample to try and get some good data. So you would be able to apply those results to your population, but you're not gonna get cause and effect out of that. Okay. Uh, bottom left box, so you don't have a random sample, but you do have random assignment to treatment groups. So where this one typically comes up is in medical research. It's difficult to get a random sample in medical research because you do typically need those patients to be close to where that treatment is occurring. And so they, you make use of that repetition and replicate to really uh, be able to use those results. But for a first study or a single study, that most of those medical studies are going to fall here. So you would be able to get cause and effect, but you can't really apply those results to your population. The bottom right box is the worst box to be in. Um, this would be you don't have a random sample. You didn't assign um, people randomly to treatment groups. And so you're not going to get much out of this. I, the only reason I could think anybody might be in that box is either they don't know science and statistics and are doing bad research, or they're doing some sort of very small pilot study to at least get a handle on what they want to do once they spend the money to pull a random sample and really go to the work of randomly assigning people to treatment. But otherwise, um, people really should not be in that bottom right hand box. So. If you're asked, can we apply these results or generalize these results to the population, check to see if they have a random sample. If you're asked if you get cause and effect, you want to check to see if they have random assignment to treatment groups.